talk to me about Morris and, and nutrition and how your career, uh, the, the science of the food changed. Like when you joined, yeah. was there any science around them? The, no, well, it's funny. We might, I'm meeting Jerry Flannery, you know, in a little while. Uh, he's over with Harlequins playing Leinster. But uh, I remember we were in the academy. So we were in the kind of Irish academy. There was no provincial academies then. And it was brilliant uh but they had a bit of a way to go as well but i remember we 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 got a big we got a nutrition talk from a nutritionist and then they were providing lunch for us and lunch was a white roll with ham cheese and coleslaw you know so they've told us uh, uh, what to eat and how to be disciplined and how to plan and then you know the other few have supplied us with uh, <laughs> a bread roll essentially so it's come a mile from then you know a nutritionist used to be quite ap- academic but now they have to know they have to know their stuff but they have to be able to build relationships with players as well and find out what's going on really behind the scenes yeah and they have to make things practical that's the challenge and uh you know i would have some of my best scores were towards the end of my career when what I'd scores actually, are you talking about? Is it body uh, fat? Or I suppose it... lean mass and body okay. fat, yeah. And it would have been really because I remember sitting with we'd, we'd a scrum half with us on loan, um, Toby, I'm after forgetting his second name, which is a shame. Uh, he was a brilliant guy, but his wife was a nutritionist. And I remember sitting with her and I was eating an omelette and it was only egg whites in the omelette. And she was saying, why, why is your omelette so white? And I said, well, it's just an egg white omelette. I took out the yolks to get rid of the fat. And she said... You know, the way I am, I'm a slow gainer. She said, there isn't a pick of fat on you. You eat, need to eat more fat, not less. And uh, and I started looking into that and chatting to Jason Coleman and, and things like that then. And I really, uh, from then on, stopped taking fat out of my diet. I kept fat in my diet. And I went on a period where I was probably in the best physical shape I was in, but also I was a little bit less injured. Yeah, and, uh, it's not a coincidence, is it? Yeah, it's not a coincidence. I think, you know, the guys that are obsessed with it it actually gives them a bit of anxiety and they get a bit stressed over the guys that are about guys that are about 85 percent are the guys that get the most value out of it you know you hear roy Keane the other day well, talk that's it, about four percent yeah it's not good for you you know you i think that took about a year and a half off his career at the end yeah. well that in the hip obviously but like it's not a, again it's like he was starting to get injured a lot and sick and it's like your body can't cope with the strains you're putting on it. Yeah. So the science has improved to the bit where you can get good resources now, I presume. The kids coming up at 18, 19, they're not getting bread rolls, they're getting access to this type of thinking. Yeah, they have good habits. It's it's habits, you know. We all know what we should eat. It's just what are your habits and how well do you plan around it? Yeah. And, and that's, I think that's what a lot of nutritionists have gotten better at, is, is giving people or players the tools to eat well rather than telling them what they should be eating. Yeah. Uh, what about your weight? Did that go up and down a lot over your career? Uh, yeah, I was, always tra- I was always, tra- it is very important. I was always trying to put it on. I mean, I'm, 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 I was 112 kilos. That was my fighting weight. I mean, from what I hear in, in, in England, you wouldn't get a contract now unless you're 120 as a second row. Right. So I was the kind of skinny second row that jumped in the line out uh, and you know probably then the scrum i had to work very very hard on on my technique because i knew i didn't have the the bulk or the size but it, it didn't fluctuate but i mean i played against new zealand at 105 kilos which seven kilos less than yeah there wouldn't be there wouldn't be a second row in any of the academies i would imagine playing at 105 kilos now and um, how did you get down to that you just had stopped doing all the, the eating or no what? no that was i was only 21 i just hadn't okay, put right. on the side i remember that season i got into about 108 but then you get injured and you can't go to the gym and you're you're playing games all the time so that's stripping weight off you you know so um and are you eating like two chickens a day at this point and is it has it got to that level um yeah i was yeah and and you know when you try and eat very clean that's when it's hard to put on size i think you know it's when you're not afraid of putting fat into your diet so if you'd been piling on the peanuts and the a bit of peanut butter fine. and yeah full f- not not eating low fat milk and you know full fat butter and full fat milk and not cutting the fat off your steaks or your rashers yeah. which we used to do you know because jerry flannery used to do it because so Jerry Flannery and Dunica used to influence a lot of the guys in 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 the 
diet side of things. So we'd all be copying them, whether it was right or wrong. <laughs> and for Flannery, it was vanity as much as it was <laughs> about performance. So, uh, but I even remember reading about Michael Phelps. We were calorie counters one time in Spala, and it showed that me and Dunica were burning about eight thousand calories a day. Right. So no matter how clean you ate, you couldn't get that in. You needed to have fat in your diet. Yeah. And uh, I remember reading a thing about Phelps's diet and the amount of, you know, he was having mayonnaise and he was having all these things because he was training so much, burning so much uh, calories that he needed the fat in his diet. And I was I was a little bit similar. Did you enjoy all that kind of part of the job of learning about that kind of stuff? Yeah, loved this, loved this, yeah, loved this. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that part of it because, again, they were it was the no talent stuff, you know, it was it was they were all very controllable. Where did you get the no talent thing? So just this is, you want to be world class at the stuff that doesn't require talent. Where did that I come was from? just, I don't know, I, you know, you heard, you'd hear things like control the controllables. I don't think I was ever involved with a coach that ever said that, but um, but it made sense to me, you know. I probably, I, I'd taken up rugby at 16, a little bit later than a lot of guys, so I was always a little bit behind in some regards, so I was looking for ways to catch up maybe, and uh, those were the kind of things where you could, steal a bit of a march on people. 